This is Tomo News for Friday, February 17th. Gross photo shows why dogs should not eat chocolate. What we are about to show is really, really gross. So if you don't want to see what happens when a dog eats too much chocolate, click away now. This is Sophia, a boxer who made an animal hospital in Virginia look like a scene from The Exorcist after eating too much chocolate. Sophia's problem started last holiday season when she and an unnamed canine partner in crime helped themselves to more than a kilo of chocolate left under the Christmas tree by owner Daisy Roja. Chocolate contains a stimulant called theobramine that is toxic to dogs. It can affect the heart, kidneys, and central nervous system. Dogs who eat too much chocolate can die. At best, they'll suffer symptoms including diarrhea, seizures, and vomiting. The darker the chocolate, the more theobramine it contains. Doses of around 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight are toxic to dogs. Sophia and the other dog were rushed to an animal hospital for treatment, suffering from vomiting and high heart rates. After chucking up another chocolate fountain, the dogs were fed activated charcoal to stop the toxins from being absorbed and given intravenous fluids. The animal hospital released the pooch puke photo on social media to warn owners not to feed their dogs chocolate this festive season. Sophia and her friends survived death by chocolate and made a full recovery from the incident. Man distracted by his phone falls 60 feet to his death. Man in his 30s who was so distracted by his cell phone didn't see a 60 foot drop in front of him and tumbled to his death off a California cliff on Christmas Day. Joshua Burwell fell from San Diego's Sunset Cliffs last Friday after getting out of a car to help look for parking spaces near the cliff. The cliffs are a popular spot on Christmas Day, so Burwell and his companion were having a hard time finding a parking spot. While looking at an electronic device in his hands, Burwell reportedly tripped and fell. He fell 50 to 60 feet from the edge of the cliff to the ground below. Three bystanders found a way to climb down the cliff and try to perform CPR on Burwell. However, paramedics found the 33-year-old dead at the scene. Locals told NBC San Diego that visitors often underestimate how dangerous the cliffs are. OB RAG, a local publication, reports that there has been an average of three deaths or serious injuries each year at the cliffs since 2005. The FDA proposes to end the ban on blood donations from gay and bisexual men. The FDA banned blood donations from gay or bisexual men and men who have sex with men in 1983. During the rise of the HIV AIDS epidemic, when the disease was found to be transmitted through blood transfusions, the FDA is now proposing to lift that ban, providing the donor has not had sex with another man in the past 12 months. A lifetime ban on people who have used IV drugs or have engaged in sex for money or drugs would still be in place. Out of the 1.2 million people over the age of 13 living with HIV in the U.S., 76% are male. Of that 76%, more than two-thirds of them are gay, bi, or are men who have sex with men. A study by the CDC found that one in five gay or bisexual men is infected with the virus. Donated blood is always tested for HIV antibodies and HIV ribonucleic acid. RNA testing can detect the infection at an earlier stage. However, it's possible that blood from very recently infected donors may slip through undetected. American society has changed since blood donation by gay men was banned in 1983, but without having eliminated the possibility of accidental HIV transmission, the FDA's proposed rule change is not without risks. Man throws rocks at cops and gets shot to death. An ex-convict has been killed by police in a bizarre Boxing Day shooting in Arizona. A man reportedly threw a rock at a police car outside a Phoenix police precinct on Saturday morning, striking the vehicle. After the officer called for backup, the man, identified as ex-convict Lonnie Neeson, threw another rock at the precinct, breaking the glass on a door. Neeson threw another rock as policemen approached, aiming for one of the officer's heads. The rock bounced off a tree and hit the officer's hand instead. The same officer responded by firing a single shot, critically wounding Neeson. He died later at a local hospital. Neeson's family told police that he had taken a gun and alcohol on Friday, but returned the weapon Saturday morning. They added that he was impaired, without specifying how, and was making suicidal statements when he left. 
Eason had a string of convictions dating back to 2000 and served three prison terms, the most recent of which was for criminal trespassing and weapons misconduct charges. Now Walmart refuses to write gay on surprise prom cake. Remember Anthony Martinez, the gay high school senior that got asked to prom by Jacob Lestensky, his straight BFF with the cutest banner ever? Well, he and his straight best buddy are now super famous. They went on the Ellen DeGeneres show on the same day with Scarlett Johansson. <gasps> and Teen Vogue followed them around documenting their awesome prom night. However, it seems not all parties were on board with this happy union. Jennifer Sandoval, the aunt of Martinez, wanted to surprise the couple with a cake to celebrate her nephew's big night. She wanted to have the phrase, you're gay, he's straight, you're going to prom, you couldn't have had a better date, on the cake. However, was told by a Walmart employee that they can't put the word gay on the cake. Sandoval was perplexed by the refusal and was told the same thing by the manager. She eventually settled with putting this on the cake. You matter, prom king. Lame. Walmart has since tried to distance themselves from the incident, saying nowhere in their store's policy does it say the word gay cannot be written on a cake. Fortunately, the boys loved the cake, and this incident didn't dampen the pair's prom on May 2nd. They even took to the dance floor during the couple's part of the night. Aww. Boy's seatbelt comes undone on Texas roller coaster. <laughs> Terrifying moment a little boy's seatbelt came undone on an amusement park ride. Dad Delbert Latham captured the footage as his young son Keeson slipped to the bottom of the ride's back cart. Latham grabbed his son tightly and held him for the rest of the ride. He said he reported the incident to staff at the park, but the response angered him. According to Latham, staff stopped a visitor from sitting in the back seat but continued to operate the ride. Dobert Latham and his six year old son Keeson visited the Wonderland Park in Amarillo, Texas on April 22nd. They decided to ride the park's mousetrap roller coaster. The mousetrap is 52 feet tall and 1,710 feet long. Rides on the Italian-made roller coaster last about two minutes. Latham filmed the moment on his cell phone when the seat belt in the ride's back cart came undone and his son slipped down the seat. Latham held onto his son tightly before the ride came to a stop. Wonderland Park said in a statement it was extremely concerned about the incident. It said the back car was immediately taken out of operation and checks were made on all the other seatbelts. The park said safety checks were carried out daily and the mouse trap was back in full operation the next day. The park said the ride was initially built without seatbelts, but it later installed them for additional safety. Former Wisconsin reading teacher accused of having sex with student 12 times in her classroom. Teacher in the Milwaukee suburb of Menominee Falls has admitted to police that she had sex with a 16-year-old student. 30-year-old April Novak was a reading interventionist at Menominee Falls High School until she resigned earlier this month. Novak was a favorite teacher among parents and students alike. But one particular student was her favorite, at least starting from mid-October. She confessed to having sex with the 16-year-old 12 times, always in her classroom and during school hours. Then on December 11th, another teacher saw Novak and the student making out in her classroom and reported her. When police confronted her about the accusations, she said she understood the boy was underage, but that they had very strong feelings for each other. Now, the once-loved school teacher faces 12 counts of sexual assault of a student by school staff, which could get her six years in jail if convicted. Understandably, her husband filed for divorce on the day charges were filed. But what do you think? Is she nasty or nice? London Muslim terrorist filmed by many, but only two people actually tried to stop him. What would you do if you saw a crazed looking man with a bloody knife lunging at people while screaming something about Syria? Most people understandably ran away. A good many others pulled out their phones and started filming. Very few, however, actually tried to do something to help. 29 year old Muhadin Mire entered East London's Leytonstone metro station at about 7 p.m. Saturday and punched a 56 year old man carrying a guitar to the ground. Mira then leapt onto the man and using a box cutter or craft knife, began cutting the guitarist's neck in what may have been an attempt to behead the victim. Leaving his first victim seriously wounded, the terrorist lunged at other commuters. 
Two brave men then attempted to distract and corner the attacker. One of the men was not named, but the other is Leytonstone resident David Pethers. Pethers says he saw kids in the metro station and decided he had to try to take the suspect down. Pethers, 33, then reportedly tried to tackle the knifeman, trading punches with the terrorist suspect until police arrived. It was only later Pethers realized his own neck had been slashed. It took two taser hits before the suspect dropped his knife and was arrested. The 56-year-old guitarist was taken to hospital, but his wounds are not believed to be life-threatening. Heather's cut did not require medical attention, but his temper required some calming. Heather says he became furious after people approached him following the incident, saying, good job, and we got it all on film. Are you crazy, Heather says he told the cameraman? You stood there filming and did nothing? What do you think? Should more people have tried to help subdue the knife-wielding terrorist? Or is that asking too much? Would you have filmed or helped? <laughs>